Coming on the heels of the directive by the Federal Ministry of Education that all federal government colleges, that's FGCs, in Abuja be closed down following security threats on the Unity Colleges located in the FCT, the evacuation of students from the schools is no doubt a step in the right direction to safeguard their lives and also in keeping the educational structure alive. It would be recalled that some of the FGC students had been asked to vacate the school premises on July 20th, while others will close on July 26th, that is after the NECO. This is the situation for secondary schools sector, while that of the university has been on for roughly five months and still counting. To this end, the Nigeria Labour Congress and other organized labour movements across the country embarked on a two-day peaceful protest to press home their demand that the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the federal government have to make concessions in their negotiations in order to resolve the lingering strike in the education sector. This being the case, one begins to wonder what is becoming of the educational system. On one hand, students are asked to go home due to security threats, while on the other hand, students are out of school for a fault that is readily not theirs. What is the way to go for students in both secondary and tertiary learning in the country? In our discussion on the program Nigeria today, we will be looking at the security for schools and what lies ahead for the students as we go forward. I am Lydia Odijochi. Welcome to the program. It's my delight to welcome uh, to this, my guest to discuss the security for schools once again, Dr. Sani Aliu, Co-Commandant General, Neighborhood Enlightenment and Safety Organization, NESO, Counterterrorism and Counterinsurgency Organization. Glad to have you join us once again. Thank you very much. All right. We're also expecting to have a mental health first aider, emotional intelligence coach, Ikalo Udo. We hope she can join us in the course of the program. All right. Let me ask you, Dr. Aliu. The federal government's directive to close down Unity schools following the adverse security threats in parts of the FCT. What has been the reaction? of parents, guardians, was, and of course Nigerians. Well, like you rightly said earlier, uh, it is not, uh, it is a welcome uh, development to safeguard the lives of uh, our children in schools, as well as uh, it's a very disturbing one, disrupting their educational pursuit. Okay. Uh, uh, this being said, uh, it's, it looks, it is, it's a just, temp it's a temporary arrangement mm to make sure that uh, things are put in place, things are in order and uh, before maybe they will call them back to, to school. But however, if you want to look at the whole situation from the angle of insecurity suffering in Nigeria today, you would like to uh, say it's very disturbing because one, uh, the problem we are grappling with today largely is alleged to these miscreants not having proper formal education and so they are vulnerable to be used mm. as terrorists and so on and so forth uh, to, to, to as good other uh, criminalities. So if this is the, that was the situation and now again mm. our children in university have been out of school for some time now because of ASU strike, uh, secondary school, the build up stage again is now closing. Uh, this shouldn't be the case. Uh, I think what we need to do as a temporary measure is okay, but we, look, we need to look at the permanent measure. 
which is to ensure that uh, because as it is today if we do not hunt down these terrorists anywhere we go they will keep hunting us anywhere we are whether we are in schools whether we are in our offices whether we are at home whether we are on the road whether we are on the air they will keep hunting us down so the idea is to get a permanent solution to okay. to put this uh, insecurity uh, uh, to become a thing of the past and the only way we can do that is to look at the whole scenario the situation and deploy a facelessness into the into the war and other unconventional ways of uh, dealing with the situation because right now you be you you, you are aware that just uh, yesterday also uh, we lost a, a, an army lieutenant yeah. along uh, Buari yes. uh, Kubwa because those on patrol they were ambushed by terrorists and they were attacked that is to say that the intelligence report that has been going around is true that these guys are already in the FCT. Mm. So what do we do? How do we deal with the situation? We must change our model of brandy so that we can hit them anywhere they go. We must be the ones hunting them down, not allowing them to keep hunting us. Mm. That is the strategy. And the only way we can go is to deploy new methodology. That is facelessness and other unconventional strategies. Okay, okay. Yes. All right. You mentioned that in our, in our, in our last outing. Yes. The issue of faceless agents mingling with the community and, of course, the society so Absolutely. they can pick up intelligence Absolutely. and could also help to counter planned attacks Absolutely. in the society. Absolutely. And uh, it's not only on that intelligent angle. Uh, the facelessness equally mm -hmm. will be equipped in a way they can wage them. They can fight them. They can combat them. They wouldn't know that they cannot identify them whether they are military mm. or they are police mm -hmm. or this. So it is it is a whole lot of you know these uh, uh, terrorists don't have uniform. They don't. Have, they, are, they equally are faceless. So until we deploy that method mm -hmm. on dealing with the situation, then our military men and policemen and other security uniform uh, uniform security agencies are at risk of losing their lives. So we must, there must be a robust collaboration, a robust re renewed thinking, a robust renewed strategy to deal with this situation. We must be, I insist, we must be the one hunting them down. We shouldn't fold our hands waiting for them to come into our society or to come and disturb, disturb our system. We should be the one to disrupt their plans. We should be the one to attack them. They should be running away from us not coming to us we should engage them mm -hmm. and this is not done yet mm -hmm. and until the government see this see it as a necessary option mm -hmm. an urgent necessary option mm -hmm. then it means uh, fct schools are closing kaduna soon will soon be closing niger schools will soon be closing nasara school will soon be closing. all around the country schools will be closing already we are already suffering from a setback in the southeast where children can no longer go to school on monday losing all lots a whole lot of study for for that for that day okay. so if you look at it the whole thing the whole uh, the whole situation is breeding another new form of criminality in nigeria because when these children are out of school they say it, the common say, uh, saying is mm -hmm. that the, the idle man the, the idle mind is a devil's workshop yes. and so they equally become vulnerable and they can be easily uh, recruited to 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 to, to continue finding uh, criminality, critical cr crimes in the country. Okay, uh, let me still go ahead with this, this suggestion, you, uh, suggestion you've made. Now, talking about your own organization, the NESO now, this faceless uh, method we are talking about, are we capable, do you think we are capable of realizing this across the country? And also, do you think that in our own climb, because this is also used in other climb, to get intelligence so that they can forestall planned attacks on the community. Now, do you think that this method could work in our climb because of the lack of trust, especially 
with some security agencies? Well, uh, you see, when there is uh, when the situation is there is a bad situation on ground, yeah. you make do of the necessities that are available for you. Okay. First of all, NESO, like you rightly asked, is an organization with over 70,000 membership across the country. Okay. And again, uh, they are in, we are all in the 36 state, including Abuja. Now, we have we, we have had a trial uh, situation in Meduguri. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, uh, the, the, when terrorists were uh, launching campaigns in Meduguri and elsewhere in the country, the only method, the, in the first place when we brought this idea, the military were not equally comfortable with the idea. Mm -hmm. But with time, they realized what we are doing and they key into it. Because most of these guys are not from outer space. Yes. They, they were in, so, so somehow they were in the communities. They were attended to in the communities, and they they they, they, they interact with the community. So one or two persons in the community must have known one or two of their faces, must have had at one time interact. interact interacted, and so they are easy to identify this thing. Like what we did in Abuja mm -hmm. some times ago, where was to pick some uh, the terrorism terrorists from uh, 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 what do you call it, Guarumpa here and some places in uh, Abuja because the boys we deploy into the act mm -hmm. we are people who actually have come in contact at one time of the other with this guy and they know that they have deferred into becoming terrorists. Okay. So it was easier for them to identify them. Mm -hmm. It was easier for them to arrange how they were arrested and picked. Okay. And so uh, the Nigerian army was actually gaining during this, this, this time in question because I remember vividly mm -hmm. The United, uh, the Pentagon came to us and we were asking questions whether they will stay in Nigeria, they will, I should allow uh, a, a U.S. Embassy to continue staying in Abuja or relocate it to Lagos. We gave them candid opinion that no, it's, there's no need for that because the Nigerian security is already on top of the matter. Okay. So we can deploy such thing. Okay. Thank God we now have uh, my second guest, a mental health first aider. Emotional intelligence coach Ikalo Udo. I got that right, didn't you I? Did. Thank All you right. so much, and good evening, our viewers. Uh, yes. You're welcome. Now, Thank you. Let, we're talking about this shutting down of schools. In fact, the, the educational sector generally, schools shutting down due to security threats. Now, of course, on one hand, the tertiary institutions had been shut down for months, the ASU thing, and with no, no end in sight. And then, of course, now the secondary schools in the FCT are about have been told to shut down and all go home. What sh would you recommend would, should be the way forward to safeguard the education of our children? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Sincerely, it's always important to start with the, the way the schools received the news. The hmm. panic was terrible. Hmm. Everybody was panicking. Teachers were panicking, school authorities, parents, first of all, were scared. I called a man today hmm. Who told me he has never been he has never been so terrified he rushed to school mm -hmm. because of the news to pick his son and his son has not was supposed to write three papers today but the son was only able to write one so the trauma mm. on the child that is what's happening why are we going home i have not yet finished my exams i'm supposed to finish on friday so it's as if we're going back to the covid shutdown mm. proprietresses and proprietors of schools are scared they are worried because they are, they're saying that what is happening because of insecurity, mm. we've lost, they've lost time, they're trying to catch up mm. and exams, that means schools that don't have internet will not be able to finish or online mm. facilities for education. Mm. So those schools will not have a complete assessment of their children's performance. Well, I just would love the Minister of Education and the government, especially to safeguard our schools. We are not, we, we are living in a society and there's no safety, we can't function. So to move forward is what should they advise people to do? That's for private schools. What about the public schools who they don't have any option? That means they can't complete it and everybody is just confused right now. They don't even know what to do. Okay, now let me, let me, let me ask you about uh, this, uh Safe school initiative, which yeah. was brought about some time back, since the schools were being attacked, yes. students abducted. Where are we now with that initiative? I think we, as Nigerians and the leaders, we forget so easily. We bring out policies that were as a result of issues, but we don't record them to be able to take to have the forecasts. 
to predict that if this was what happened and look at what cost it, can we now ensure that we maintain it? You forget so easily, even with the issue of washing our hands. You know, Nigerians always go back to, it has gone, it has gone. And that is the same thing with schools. It's so terrifying to know that we are at this stage again. So that Safe School Initiative, I feel that the government does not implement its policies and know that assessing where, what made us to get there, we need to stay there. Stay there and ensure that those um, the school parameters, the fence, and all those things that were put in place are still there. But we forget when we forget what what you suffered. That's why we still go back into suffering. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's let, let's take a break now. We'll be back to talk more. Stay with us. This is NTA News 24, broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime, on the following platforms. Start times, channel 101, Greek TV, channel 703, GSTV, channel 419, and Go TV, channel 46. For more information, log on to our website, www.nta.ng, or join us on our social media handles, Facebook at NTA News 24. For comments, suggestions and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nta.gov.ng or call us on the following numbers. NTA News 24. News and more news. The program is still Nigeria Today and we're discussing security for schools and my guests are still here with me, Dr. Sani Aliu and Ikalo Udo. Now, let me ask you, Dr. Aliu, some people have said that uh, beyond regular physical and theory, that's theoretical education, schools should adopt martial arts or combat training, especially for the girls. How would you react to this? Well, uh, it's not new because uh, if you go to Israel, that is what is happening because uh, all Israeli uh, uh, citizen is a potential military officer mm -hmm. and uh, a security agent and intelligence agent at the same time. So we need to deploy such uh, training in our schools. And, but that is not going to be just immediately achieved. Uh, we are looking at how we are, uh, this situation has truncated students' learning. Mm -hmm. And so what do we do to make sure that it didn't take a very long time? Like you just said, mm -hmm. COVID-19 has al already dealt with the situation. A lot of people are out of business. A lot of schools are trying to recoup now. And uh, this, this, this again. So what is it that we are lacking? And what did we learn from mm -hmm. what happened mm -hmm. earlier mm -hmm. with Chibo girls mm -hmm. and the Dutch girls? What measures have we taken? What instrument, what, technical, what technicalities, what strategies have we adopted ensuring that we have safeguarded our schools? Nothing. Mm. Mm. Nothing. And this, we must appreciate this situation very well as it is, that this uh, te terrorism, uh, the terrorists themselves, they move in large group, one. It is not a thing that you go and put one military. Look at what happened in Kuje. We have military, we have combined military, police, and everybody there. And look at how they operated for two and a half hours uninterrupted. Now, you are talking of a medium prison that has all it takes to be secured. Then you now talk about secondary schools. Who is going to mine it? You're going to put a, a, a police officer there? Or <laughs> put 20 of them, they can't stop these guys. The only way we can stop these guys is not by building parameters, fences around our schools or something, it's by way, like I said earlier, of hunting them down, mm -hmm. pushing them, following them to where they are, and we don't give them respite at all to mm -hmm. think or to plan. Mm -hmm. We engage them. But in as much as I will be in town doing big man leasing, mm -hmm. wearing uniform and showcasing and mm -hmm. harassing drivers and harassing, mm -hmm. uh, say, uh, uh, I mean, Nigerians on the road mm -hmm. and leave the bush there for them to, mm -hmm. to, to be planning, then it means we are not ready to fight this thing, uh, this, uh, this war yet. So it is, it is when we engage them and when we don't give them that respite to plan or to even think of coming to town, mm -hmm. then we can leave our schools doors open and with one or two policemen mm -hmm. or some few uh, little intelligence officers that will be 
uh, getting intelligence around mm -hmm. the marketplaces, around the, the community where the school is. It's not only about the school, it's about the entire community. Mm -hmm. Because if we zero down to school, it is easier to, to, for the school to be attacked. Yes. But if we safeguard the whole community, mm -hmm. before you beat the community and come down it's to the, the school, school you have already been defeated. Yes, that's, that's true. true. Now, Ikalo, yes. do you think the recent hike in threats of insecurity will affect the quality of education in our country. Definitely. Go to our embassies. Mm. Every day, people are looking for how to send their children out. Who, the teachers are also going out. The doctors who are supposed to train the medical students are also going out. Mm. So who is left to give quality education to our children? When they are threatened, their lives are threatened. You have to save yourself first before you want to give value to anyone. Many of my friends have left. Hmm. A particular hospital that I, will, I met a consultant, the guy has left. I was referred to another hospital because he said the consultant has left. Hmm. So the educational system, who is there? They, have, they are all parents, they are family owners, they have their own families. They want to be safe. So everybody needs to be safe. And the government should ensure that every institution not only our school the homes everywhere are safe now when we went on a break just a few moments ago you're talking about a, a, a proprietress complaining yes about the implication the ripple effect of what has just happened okay. some schools allow parents who have not been able to meet their financial um, obligations, obligations to okay they will pay but when there is this kind of abrupt stoppage those parents will say ah, after all, you did not finish the term, so why should I pay? And the school is believing that from the, we finished your exams for your children, next term, which many schools are even planning to increase school fees hmm. because of the economic bite. But what justification do they have to do that when the school did not close, we've not finished exams, are you promoting it? So there's a lot of disincentive to stay behind. People are going to be looking for options. Online schooling is highly recommended. Okay. Whereby schools that should think of quickly adopting the in technology so that what happens abroad mm -hmm. can happen here. Many people abroad are working and schooling from their house and they have the same qualifications, mm -hmm. certifications everywhere. Look at our undergraduates. They are at home, but many of them are taking professional courses. courses. They're taking certificates in less than three months. Mm -hmm. So how valuable is our educational system when they can get all that by sitting in their houses and getting... Online. to the internet in fact not just uh, federal government colleges also private universities have asked their students to go home in the fct wow yes, yes i can tell you that wow so yeah. you see they've crumbled yeah. the system mm. should you now say that what they actually planned to make people not to go to school is coming to pass i think the government should try and push that back and be offensive as you have said mm -hmm. offensive take it there like mm -hmm. don't come close to our sister to our city but right now what the minister says is, go, 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 go. If I relocate from the FCT, I was shocked. The schools, he said the school students in schools in the FCT should try and move away from the FCT. Wow. Okay, now, in, uh, we're about rounding up. Let me ask you one final question. What is the synergy between institutions like yours and security agencies, and how do you think it can be strengthened to well, help us well, achieve Well, as security? far as I'm concerned, uh, there is no synergy at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, going by what is happening because what uh, I have just told you that the Pentagon House sent a de delegation to my office. Mm -hmm. The European Union sent delegation through Border Police, World Border Police to my office. Okay. Nigerian police has not visited me. Nigerian army has not visited me. They, the, none of them has visited, visited me. The only people I can say we have been robust working together was DSS earlier and then the military equally during Brutai. We had a robust uh, okay. uh, uh, relationship, but now uh, we are just sitting down looking at the situation because uh, only our boys that or we are already engaged uh, in the Northeast that are still performing under the kind of, uh, canopy of civilian JT because yeah, we have our, about 90% of our boys with the civilian JTF. So what we are saying is that the government should look inward okay. instead of talking of mercenaries we are a country of over 200 million people mm -hmm. with over 65 percent youths mm -hmm. and this large portion of these youths are unemployed mm -hmm. and again it is 
easier for them to tap in. These youths are ready to sacrifice themselves yeah. and their life for their country. Yeah, okay. We have been able to get, gather 70, over 70,000 of youths together, mm -hmm. give them direction of patriotism and dedication to service of the nation without okay. paying them one naira as volunteers. Okay. So if you, most of the best militaries in the world, we, they started as volunteers, yes. even even civil, uh, civil Nigerian civil defense okay. started as volunteers. So the government should look for people like us. Let's sit down at the round table and discuss, and other military ships will come together so All that right. we can get the way out. Okay, well, they are, I, I know they're, they're listening to you, and I know... I hope, we hope so. They have been I listening. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode of Nigeria Today, and I must thank my guest at this point, Dr. Sani Aliu, Corps Commandant General, CCG, Neighborhood Enlightenment, and Safety Organization, NESO. And also Ikala Odo, yes, a mental health first aider, emotional intelligence coach. And to you, our viewer back home, we thank you so much for always tuning in. You can watch this and other episodes of the program at www.youtube.com slash ntnu 24 hub Thank you for watching. I am Lydia Ojiochi saying bye for now. See you tomorrow. <laughs>